Welcome back to PyBytes YouTube and today a video about PyTest Django. Django comes with its own test framework, unit test. Uh, it does require you to write test classes. Um, we are a big fan of PyTest, of course, and you can use it with uh, Django without major setup. So in this video, I will introduce you to PyTest Django, set it up and write our first test for a simple CRUD app. Let's dive straight in. All right, let's uh, start with importing or cloning the Django starter project, which I used for another video on our channel about uh, Django bootstrap. Let's get into the project, make a virtual environment and pip install PyTest Django, which should also pull in Django or maybe not. No, I also need to install that. And let's look quickly at the documentation. So we need to pip install the library and then we can make a pytest.ini to, um, yeah, do the initial configuration. So this is my project. Actually, it's empty because I should use another branch. So let's check out the solution branch. And that should have some code. So it has the project folder. And it has the uh, block app with the models, the views, etc. And we need to point it to the settings, which in this project is my site slash settings. And recommended but optional is to also give it some patterns where test files are to be found. Um, yeah, the important thing about settings is the database. So the database is currently set to just um, a file-based SQLite database. Um, but as I understand from the plugin, and also how Django unit test works, is that it uh, it uses the test uses its own in-memory database. So we don't have to specify it, but we could also be explicit and specify it. And I did that in PyBytes books by loading all the settings. And here I had to also overwrite static file storage, which is not something we have to deal with in this project. And then I explicitly set it to the in-memory SQLite 3 database. But as far as I understand that plugin defaults to that behavior, so we don't really have to set it, but you could you could be explicit and do this. And in that project, I also uh, use the adopts to to ignore some warnings, but uh, we don't really need that yet. Hence, I'm just going to use the existing settings, All right? Now we need to make a test folder. I'm going to put that on the same level as the project and as well as the blog as the app and then we need to write some tests so and before doing that actually let me show you um, the concept of fixtures uh, we have another video on fixtures i will link but yeah here in the documentation they're called helpers um, but the plugin comes with a lot of fixtures or helpers out of the box which you should definitely use um, for example, we have the client. Um, so it comes with a test client that can make uh, HTTP requests. So it can do get, post, uh, et cetera. It has a fixture to a shortcut to the user model. So Django user model. Uh, and one thing to notice as well with this plugin is the database. So by default, you cannot touch the database. Uh, the plugin is pretty conservative about that. So if you want to touch the database, you need to use the DB fixture or the uh, PyTest Mark Django DB decorator. And we'll see that because as soon as we start to hit the database, um, we're going to um, hit this issue. So let's uh, just write one test. So here are my views. This is a CRUD app, right? So we have list, detail, new, edit, delete. So um, yeah, let's just um, 
write a test for this list view, right? So I would have to import from block views, import block list. So in my test directory, you're going to make test block.py from block.views import block list. And here I'm going to write a block list test. And I got copilot on, but actually what I want to do is make a get request to a block. But at this point, there are no blog posts, right? So we definitely will need to have some setup code, hence a fixture, to populate the database with some things. So I'm also going to import the models. I'm going to write a fixture. Yeah, this probably works. Um, I need to import PyTest. need to pass in this fixture client as we saw before comes with PyTest Django and let's quickly look at the model so to make a model entry we need a title we need a post I mean, copilot could not know that we need a slug that's that's a great suggestion now it's actually that's interesting and now it actually does know what it is probably because I have the other file open that's kind of cool. So we need a slug, a cover. And by the way, I was not using Copilot a lot because uh, it was only working with NeoVim and I used just the classic Vim. <laughs> then I upgraded Vim and now all of a sudden Copilot kicked in. So uh, it's, it's really cool. So yeah, cover, edit, edit it. And I don't really care about these dates, right? It's just to have a single block entry fixture. Uh, and then I can use that fixture here. Right? Now I expect this to fail because we didn't tell PyTest Django to use the, the database. So let's run this and also to confirm that this is now all wired up correctly. Also let me make sure the right PyTest is linked, which is not the case. And now it is. So when I install PyTest, I always have to re-enable my virtual environment to have the linking happening correctly. Let's see if we run into any issues. Okay, I do need a secret key. Environment variable. That's some setup. I can actually filter warnings like this in the pytest.ini. So that looks better, um, but I have not really done any asserts. So let's see what we can assert or what, what would, um, yeah, that, that makes sense that the endpoint should give a proper status code. What else can we assert? Yeah, we would have test block in the return data and we can look at the view, but actually, yeah, we don't really see ex explicitly that response. But we probably should see the post somewhere in the template show up, right? So if we go to the list template, we have a table and we have a table of the post, right? So at least I should see the title of the post. I'm a bit surprised that the database error didn't kick in and that's maybe because I only made the block in the block object in memory, not really the object. There was like when you make an ob object like this in Django, you still need to run save on it. And that's where it's actually going to kick in that database error. So let me leave this for later. Yeah, now we get the database access not allowed. So again, PyTest Django does not allow that. Use the Django DB mark or the DB or transactional DB fixtures to enable. So I can either do that here but I think it makes more sense to do that in the fixture. Again, you can you can nest fixtures, so that's good. And then it works. So again, I need to explicitly enable database access uh, when I use PyTest Django. And then the shorter way to do this um, is to do, by the way, I was not returning the block, so this, this should actually be this. 
still works, but I'm not asserting anything yet. Uh, and then the shorter way to do this is block objects create. And I might as well just return that straight away. So syntactically that works. Uh, the only thing we need to now assert something. Uh, actually there was a 404, so the route was not found. So, oh, and that's because it should just be empty. So I think it should just make a request to slash. Yeah, and that worked in the sense that this assert did not break. And uh, what can we say? Well, there's no data. Um, what do we have? Status code. Don't think it returns JSON. I think we have context, right? All right, cool. So in the context, we see that there's a post key. And that should be our the same as the fixture. So the fixture we passed in was block entry. So expect this to be the same as block entry in a list single item. I mean, we could also test the length of the list. Oh, that's not it. It's not exactly the same. Oh, because one is the query set and the other is a list. So I could cast the query set to a list. And then they are the same. And that's also a trick like well, how I usually write tests. I put a breakpoint in the code and uh, write my test right there. So this would not only assert that there's one block entry passed into the template. So basically we're not testing the template. We are testing the view. We're testing that that context or that dictionary here receives posts. And not only the length of one, but also the content would be the same. So the post passed in is the same as that block entry that we set up. And that seems a valid test to me. So again, plain functions as per PyTest, using a fixture for the setup code, using the DB fixture to access the database, and using the client fixture to make HTTP request. So that's it, I will leave it at that. Um, your first test in PyTest Django. Now take it to the next level. Cool, I hope this was helpful, that it all made sense. Uh, of course, reach out if you have any questions. And I really encourage you to check out the repo. I will put the test code in a gist, uh, copy that as well. And then, um, so follow the, the setup procedure and um, copy in the gist, the initial code, and then write additional tests for the other views and really um, implement, right? Really get that practice with PyTest Django. Good luck and uh, thanks for watching. Tomorrow we'll be back with a new video. Bye.